Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan. Hey guys. Today we have a very special guest who is in studio with us today and she is from Pro Love Tucson and her name is Lucy. So Lucy, thank you so much for joining yeah, us thank today. thank you. Thanks for having me. We're excited yeah. to be able to talk about what Lucy does with Pro Love Tucson and how they minister to women along the sidewalks of Planned Parenthood in Tucson. So we're going to be talking about that today. So before we get started, Morgan, do you want to pray for us? Yeah, of course. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, that Lucy can join us mm-hmm. in studio. And uh, I just pray, God, that you bless her um, uh, just for what she fights for, yes, uh, mm-hmm. fights for uh, life. And mm-hmm. I just pray, Father, that you would encourage her and thank you for this ministry that she gets to be a part of and gets to run now. Mm-hmm. And I just pray that you bless uh, Pro Love Tucson, yes, that you would um, let this grow. I pray that mm-hmm. during this podcast that people will get um, even more passionate mm-hmm. to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. Mm-hmm. Those who, um, kind of like the Bible says, those who are mute, mm-hmm. those who can't talk, that we can stand up for those um, who can't do that right now. And so thank you, God, uh, for all that she does. And I know that I... I don't support abortion, and I, but I still don't know much about all the laws and everything. So thank you for her coming in and educating us and uh, teaching us and showing us how we could mm-hmm. be more involved, God. And mm-hmm. I just pray, Father, that we would look at your word and see that mm-hmm. you say not to murder. You mm-hmm. say uh, those who shed innocent blood, uh, th- that you hate that. Mm-hmm. And so I just pray, God, that um, you would help us to uh, help us to be encouraged not to say, oh, man, there's so many abortions going on, so much um, death and so much sadness. Oh, it's too much for us. But God, that we would do our part, That's that right. even though we can't change the whole world, mm-hmm. that we can be an influence here in Tucson and whoever is watching across the world, that they can be an influence in their community. So please bless this time mm-hmm. and we give it to you and we thank you again for Lucy, and uh, we just pray that you would lead us right now. Mm-hmm. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, Amen. Lucy, if you could share with our listeners who don't know you, mm-hmm. who you are and what you do. Okay. Um, my name is Lucy Smith. I'm director of Pro Love Tucson. Mm-hmm. We're a volunteer group of sidewalk advocates. Mm-hmm. Sidewalk advocates are men and women that stand outside of abortion facilities mm-hmm. offering hope and help to those that are coming, mostly those that are in an unintended pregnancy. Mm -hmm. In Tucson, which uh, that's where we're located, Mm -hmm. although different cities have different dynamics, uh, we have two abortion facilities Mm -hmm. now, and it is lawful and legal to stand on the public sidewalk Mm -hmm. and dialogue with them. Thank the Lord we still have our free speech, right, in this country, and be able to talk with people that would are willing to talk with us Mm -hmm. about the options, the help that's available in our communities, Um, the faith-based pregnancy centers. Mm -hmm. I know there are those in every community nationwide, but uh, Tucson, we have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And our group is a group of trained sidewalk advocates. So we go through training, we shadow, kind of get used to dialoguing, how to dialogue with different clients Mm -hmm. that are coming for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And then we're equipped with gift bags that are for different clients. Um, One of the, well, the bigger pregnancy center here, or excuse me, abortion facility in Tucson is Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And Planned Parenthood offers other things other than abortion, although that's their Mm. main business is uh, pregnancy services. But there would be clients coming for birth control, STI testing, which is sexually transmitted infections. Now the more politically correct Mm. word for sexually transmitted Mm. diseases. I know that. Uh, (laughs) Yes, infection. It doesn't sound quite as bad. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, Very few people, women that are coming for gynecological exams or urinary tract infections, um, and then maybe a post-abortion checkup Mm. um, would be coming. So we have gift bags for all of those type of services and referrals to other places in the community that are more life affirming, Mm -hmm. Um, oftentimes either free or less expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, The public health 
facilities are still receiving Title X funding, which abortion facilities do not get because they refer or offer abortion. And then we also have clinic worker bags. So Mm -hmm. we are reaching out with love to the workers as well. Um, And we're going to talk a little bit more about Abby Johnson, but she started Mm -hmm. a ministry called And Then There Were None Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. abortion workers like herself that come out of the industry to help them find another job, Mm -hmm. to get support. um, And uh, they have uh, uh, over 500 clinic workers that have come out Mm -hmm. of abortion facilities and are part of the And Then There Were None Mm -hmm. tribe, they call them, Mm -hmm. a Mm -hmm. tribe of quitters is what they call Mm -hmm. themselves. Um, So we have a a worker clinic worker gift bag that we try and reach out to them as well um so praise god yeah and we love that because so many times so many people are like well what do i do i mean i'll I'll pray and do Mm -hmm. my part but Mm -hmm. and maybe i'll like support give money to these places Mm -hmm. but i don't know what else to do so Mm -hmm. what would you say to those people who are like wanting to be Mm -hmm. like what you're doing Mm -hmm. and so what does it look like when you are on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. What have you encountered mm-hmm. or how do you approach a woman? Okay. Uh, good question, Mariah. Um, and I just want to start out with that none of us are comfortable doing this. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's not real comfortable talking no. to a stranger about sexuality no. or pregnancy, very personal, emotional kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So we don't naturally do that. Yeah. Holy Spirit emboldens Amen. us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ride on a wave of prayer mm-hmm. and um we are trained, and but you kind of just learn as you go along because yeah. every situation is different and every yeah. person is different. Yeah. And uh, so we're reaching out with God's love, mm-hmm. uh, with a grace-filled approach is mm-hmm. how we describe it, yeah. trying to put ourselves in the position of that client. Mm-hmm. Um, so our team is one that's not a big group of people. We spread ourselves out. We try and put ourselves in the position of a man or a woman that's in an unintended pregnancy because mm-hmm. that's kind of our, our target client client because we're trying to reach them with the hope and help that's available. Mm -hmm. So how would I feel comfortable? Would I feel comfortable with a whole bunch of people, you know, talking to me about this? Or would I just feel comfortable with one person just dialoguing with them, um, giving them a gift bag, offering to pray with them, walking them around the corner, which uh, in Tucson, Hands of Hope Mm -hmm. has a free faith-based pregnancy center 200 steps away from Planned Parenthood. And then the new abortion facility, which kind of new but kind of old, is called Choices Women's Center. Mm -hmm. And it's in the same complex Mm -hmm. with Hands of Hope Pregnancy Mm -hmm. Center. And they are only offering the abortion pill. Mm -hmm. So in Arizona, there's two types of abortions available. There's a surgical abortion, which Mm -hmm. can be done uh, from conception all the way up until viability, which Mm -hmm. viability... Depends a little bit on the doctor and the ultrasound showing, Mm -hmm. but it's when the baby could survive outside the womb. So Mm -hmm. there have been babies born 21 weeks Mm -hmm. um, that were viable. But uh, in Arizona, I I think typically doctors are saying 22, 23, 24 weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, Should we jump into fetal models here? So um, we've got some really great uh, fetal models, and um, we are going to just show a few of these. So... This gives the stages of development, but I really love these because they're not only the exact size of a baby at this many weeks. So this one's 22 weeks mm-hmm. uh, in the womb, and it also weighs <laughs> the oh, same wow. of that baby, and yeah. it's heavy. Yeah. Uh, so um, probably about this size baby could be aborted in the state of mm-hmm. Arizona, wow. so depending on the abortionist. Mm-hmm. Um the most abortions uh, in the United States are done in the first trimester, so till 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. But a baby could be aborted at this size. Mm-hmm. Um, so, For our uh, audio def- listeners, go yes, check out okay. our YouTube yes, that's so you right. can see it. Um, this one, definitely. This mm-hmm. is 16 weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, these would be a surgical abortion procedure. And then this one is uh, 12 weeks. Mm. Um, So that's in the range of the first trimester. So this baby could be aborted um, and is typically aborted in the state of Arizona. Then Mm. we have, these were the bigger set is for second trimester. These are first trimester babies. So seven Mm. weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, and 10 weeks. Um, And so 
to describe the 10-week baby will help us to understand the second kind of abortion that's um, offered in the United States and offered in Arizona, and that's the abortion pill. And you might have heard about that. There's been a lot of yeah. controversy about it, a lot of pub- publicity about it, especially with COVID. Yeah. Um, so the abortion pill is the second type of abortion, and that's where you take one of the abortion pills at the doctor's office, mm-hmm. at the facility. I don't even like calling it a clinic. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah. Anyways, um, and that starts to cut off the progesterone, which is the maternal Mm. hormone that sustains the baby and the uterus. Mm. So it starts to cut off the nutrients um, Mm. so that the baby actually is starving to death um, to that baby. And then you take the second pill at home, typically 24, 48 hours later, Mm. uh, your doctor will send you home with instructions. And that one causes enough cramping and bleeding for you to dispel the Mm. baby normally in the toilet at home, mm. um, up to this size baby, up wow. to a 10 week size baby. And they don't really tell you that, do they? Mm-hmm. They don't tell you how, how gruesome How big it is. Yeah. or, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. By law, they're supposed to tell you kind yeah. of what to expect, but um, as in, and I'll just mention the unplanned movie. If you yeah. haven't seen this, you have to yeah. see this. Um, no matter how you feel about abortion, it's yeah. very educational. But yeah. um, in this movie, Abby Johnson, who um, is the, uh, feature in it's her story. Unplanned is the name of the movie, thus unplanned because she worked for Planned Parenthood. Mm. But um, she says that they told her when she had her abortion pill abortion, mm-hmm. which is called a chemical abortion, um, that it would be just like a difficult period. Mm. So a little bit more heavy cramping and bleeding than a normal period. Morgan mm. does, can't relate, but <laughs> yes, Mariah and I can. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, um, and it wasn't. And she says in the movie, and actually the movie's educational because it shows yeah. a four and a half minute clip of her after taking the second of the abortion pills and how awful it was. Yeah. And right. she says she felt like she was going to die. Mm-hmm. And right. we have women coming back to tell us that on the sidewalk. Oh, Lucy, I wish I would have listened to you. Mm -hmm. It was awful. Um, So you bleed and cramp enough to dispel the baby. And it's traumatic because in that type of abortion, you actually see your baby. Mm. You see your baby at at home, um, you know, whether it's seven, eight, nine, ten week size baby. Um, So and some of the controversy, we'll just touch on that because Mm -hmm. we mentioned it with the abortion pill is... um, People that are trying to push for more COVID respectful type of things would like that to be a telemed type of an appointment Mm -hmm. so that the woman is not Mm -hmm. actually seen in person by a medical professional. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine some of the danger with that. If Mm -hmm. you just do a telemed appointment, you don't have an ultrasound, Mm -hmm. you don't have any blood work. Um, And the the reason that ultrasound is important is because it's diagnosing how far along the woman is. Mm -hmm. And most OBGYNs will tell you that women do not know how far along they are, Mm -hmm. you know, from six weeks difference in what they think they were, you know, four weeks and they're really 10 or they're eight and they're really 14. Well, you can see that it would be a big difference between 10 week and 12 week. And if they think they're only 10 weeks and they tell the doctor, I'm only nine weeks or 10 weeks, but they're really 12, that can be dangerous to have supposedly enough cramping and bleeding to dispel this baby. And a lot of times it doesn't work and they they need to go to the ER Mm. because things are, are not right. Um, the other thing is it could be an eptopic pregnancy, which is where the baby's developing in the fallopian tube and taking that chemical abortion without an ultrasound diagnosing that can lead to death Mm. for both the mom and the baby, Mm. which eptopic pregnancy, the baby's not going to survive anyway. So Mm. she needs a procedure for that. And that is not considered an abortion Mm. because that baby cannot survive there. But that needs to be diagnosed before the chemical abortion would be prescribed. Mm. Also, it's very dangerous if the woman uh, continues with that chemical abortion if she's anemic because she's already anemic and Mm -hmm. low in iron and Mm -hmm. then she's bleeding heavily for days if not weeks Mm -hmm. because of that second pill from the abortion procedure so they've been trying to push that the fda is trying to thinking about maybe adjusting those laws but right now uh in 11 states you can get the abortion pill Mm via telemed, but in our state, Arizona, it is not legal. You have to physically be seen by the abortionist Mm -hmm. before that's prescribed at either Planned Parenthood or at Choices Women's Center, Mm -hmm. which they do just the How does Arizona compare, Mm -hmm. like, abortion-wise and with the laws compared to other Mm -hmm. states? Because Mm -hmm. 
I thought I looked it up one time, and it seemed like we were doing better than <laughs> most. But mm -hmm. it's still mm -hmm. any abortion is I know. not good. But I know. Yeah, how does it compare? Well, and um, some states are even outlawing or don't have any abortion facilities, which is really yeah. great. Arizona has been known as a pro-life state. Mm -hmm. um, our governor is pro-life, Governor Ducey. Um, there's been some really great pro-life laws which have contributed to less abortion facilities. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there used to be eight abortion facilities in Pima County. Mm -hmm. wow. And there's been only one until just a couple months ago yeah. when Choices opened up. But mm -hmm. And it's partly because of our pro-life laws, laws that help to protect the health and safety of mothers yeah. as well as their preborn children. Uh, one of them is that the abortionist um, needs to have hospital privileges at a hospital if he's doing surgical abortions within 30 miles of the facility. And yeah. the reason for that is if the woman then has to go to the emergency room, yeah. they can communicate what's going on with that uh, emergency room. They can get the records from the doctor, mm -hmm. follow up. But if not, the emergency room doesn't know what happened to this woman. She just appears and she's bleeding profusely or whatever. Yeah. And there's no exchange of records that would help to save her life, mm -hmm. uh, which does happen in abortion procedures is oh, yeah. ambulances mm -hmm. pull up and pick up women and mm -hmm. take them to the hospital. And unless somebody from the facility communicates what's going on, that ER staff doesn't know. Mm -hmm. So that law is in effect in Arizona. And we have the law that can only do abortions through viability. Mm -hmm. Our neighboring state, New Mexico, mm -hmm. you can do abortions through nine months. Mm -hmm. oh. And so I have a friend on the sidewalk there, and she says there's even been women coming in labor, oh. and they'll push her to the front of the line to have mm -hmm. her abortion, which... You know, baby can survive yeah. outside of the womb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so really, there's no reason, you know, yeah. no reason at yeah. all. And mm -hmm. as we know, there are, I think the um, adoption agency that we work with, Adoption Solutions, said there's 64 couples for every one baby that's placed for adoption. Um, so there's all these couples waiting to adopt. They've been mm -hmm. pre-screened. They can provide everything that child would need, home, mm -hmm. education, food, everything, um, waiting for to adopt a baby, an wow. infant. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, some are going through the foster system, which is great. But private infant open adoption is mm -hmm. what we refer women that are in an unplanned pregnancy to. Mm -hmm. It's not the system. It's not foster care. It's mm -hmm. not child protective services, yeah. which kind of yeah. has a bad rap right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a couple that's pre-screened, ready to go, and mm -hmm. baby is, is placed in that loving family mm -hmm. if mom feels like she's mm -hmm. not in a place where she can parent that baby. Yeah. And it's open adoption where she can keep track and make yeah. sure baby's okay and get pictures or maybe visit or see why that it, child. Why do you think it's so hard? Uh, for women is it just they're not educated or they feel like oh I'm giving up like giving mm -hmm. my child up to someone mm -hmm. and I'm a bad parent like mm -hmm. what is there or is it just a bunch of those mm -hmm. factors what do you think mm -hmm. it is or some of some of both um can't give my child up yeah. yet yeah. I can have my baby aborted right that's mm -hmm. kind of like yeah. <laughs> but um a lot of people women just don't want to be pregnant. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're not even into the place where they admit that they're pregnant or that they're a mom. Yeah. Um, you know, and young women, a lot of times first pregnancy, mm -hmm. uh, not in a committed relationship, maybe mm -hmm. don't even know who the father of the baby is, or he's not committed, or he doesn't want that. She just doesn't want to be pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to continue that pregnancy. I'm in school. Uh, you know, I, I have a job that it wouldn't go inside with. I have goals, mm -hmm. whatever. So that's why a, mm -hmm. the adoption conversation mm -hmm. oftentimes is not effective right at the beginning, yeah. right in that yeah. first trimester yeah. when she's really just, I don't want to be pregnant. I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Um, it's just a glob of cells. Mm. People tell me it's just bacteria, <laughs> yeah. which we're still dispelling that myth, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. biologists, 99.9% .9 yeah. of them will say, this is a human being from the moment of conception. Yep. Individual personality, DNA that's never been and never will be again. Mm. Own individual, their hair color, their eye color, everything, characteristics in that baby yeah. huh. from the moment of conception. Mm -hmm. And the only difference between that baby and a toddler or a teenager is just time, the yeah. development stage. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the only difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're and human. And it's crazy because... 
I know so many people, like you said, they're afraid because of how they might appear, how they might look. Mm -hmm. And especially there's a lot more people who are in Christian families, so-called, and they're Mm -hmm. so afraid to tell their Christian parents Mm -hmm. because they'll feel like I'll be ostracized, I'll Mm -hmm. get in trouble, which it's it's true. It's not really a good thing if they were, you know, (laughs) off doing things they shouldn't, but at the same time, that's the whole point of Mm -hmm. grace and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of what Jesus did. Like we like to direct all of our podcasts to Jesus Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. everything we do. Cause we're not just, cause so many people might just be listening to us and like, Oh, you're just doing it because that's what you do, Lucy, Mm -hmm. but you don't understand Mm -hmm. my situation. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't. And I love, Mm -hmm. that's how you said you go Mm -hmm. about each thing on the sidewalk Mm -hmm. with, you know, discernment and being Mm -hmm. led by the Holy spirit because Mm -hmm. we don't know, Mm -hmm. but God does. And Mm -hmm. that's why it's cool how you can do direct these young women to Mm -hmm. you know god forgives you Mm -hmm. because so many times even after Mm -hmm. women have had abortions Mm -hmm. they have so much guilt so much shame Mm -hmm. they go through so much mental Mm -hmm. um just mental pain and Mm -hmm. like things um suicide it goes Mm -hmm. up so what would you say for those people out there who are saying well Mm -hmm. you don't understand my Mm -hmm. story lucy you don't understand that maybe i was raped Mm -hmm. or i didn't want this to happen so Mm -hmm. this is my choice and i Mm -hmm. choose to take even if they do believe it's a baby i choose to take this baby's life Mm -hmm. and it's fine because in my state it's legal Mm -hmm. what would you how what would you say to them and Mm -hmm. why would you say that even in the midst of a terrible situation Mm -hmm. even if it is rape Mm -hmm. why it's still important to choose Mm -hmm. life it's such a good question and a lot of questions in there. <laughs> I know it's a lot, so you can share whatever you want. Yeah, so I wanted to go back to the church thing. Yeah. So um, mm. I love it that your pastor mm. speaks about that from mm. the pulpit, and mm-hmm. all our pastors need to do that so mm. that those women in the church, because more than 50% of the women that have abortions say that they're in church once a week, once one week a month or wow. more. Yeah. So um, we are church people, mm-hmm. whether it's Protestant or Catholic. Um, And so they need to feel comfortable saying, I'm going to go talk to my pastor or my priest or my small group leader or my parents without Mm -hmm. feeling um, shame. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to speak up about this topic and say, you know what, there but by the grace of God go I. We're going to love you. We're going to encourage you. Yes, you know, you made some mistakes. My foster daughter, as I said, is pregnant right now. But you know what? She's choosing life. And that's the most important thing. And we're going to walk alongside her. We have a baby shower plan. We're going to bless her. We're going to help her, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, any way we can get them their education, whatever we can do. So Mm -hmm. uh, we're walking alongside that young lady that finds herself in an unintended pregnancy in our church, but also to speak out that healing and grace that's offered to the woman that has had an abortion. And right Mm -hmm. now the statistic is, uh, one in four women will have an abortion in their lifetime wow. mm. in the United States. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of women even that we're talking to right now yeah. that have an abortion decision in their past or guys too. Mm. Mm. You know, their girlfriend had an abortion. They feel bad about it. They're, mm-hmm. you know, a thought about it. They didn't feel. Or they pushed a girlfriend to or do pushed, that. Or they felt powerless mm. in that situation. Yeah. So offering that hope and healing. So one of our gift bags is our abortion recovery gift mm. bag. Mm. The, all those pregnancy centers in, in Tucson offer abortion recovery counseling retreats that help walk people through that healing that Jesus offers. Because, as you said, Mariah, women suffer. Yep. Um, we talk about this some. We, we go with the humanness of the baby first because yeah. it's a baby no matter what the situation. Mm-hmm. But women suffer emotionally, yeah. physically, spiritually, psychologically. They run to all sorts of awful things because they're pushing that pain down. And we have a lot of volunteers on our pro-love team that had an abortion in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they struggled with that for a long time, but they Mm -hmm. got healing. The most recent was a woman that had her abortion four years ago from Dr. Richardson, who's the Mm -hmm. Choices Women's Center. So they are on the sidewalk because Mm -hmm. they experienced such trauma with that abortion decision They don't want other girls to make that same mistake and live with that regret every Mm -hmm. day thinking, what would my baby have been like? How would Mm -hmm. I be spending time with them? They'd be four now. They'd be eight now. They'd be 20 now. Whatever. Mm -hmm. What would life have been like? I feel Mm -hmm. bad. You know, all of those things that they struggle with. So they're there on the sidewalk with Pro Love Tucson Mm -hmm. to say, hey, I can relate. 
you know, I was in that situation, yeah. teenager, unplanned pregnancy, raped, whatever yeah. situation I can relate, but there's hope and help and mm -hmm. we can help you so you don't struggle with Amen. that regret the rest of your exactly. life. Yeah. Exactly. But just addressing that rape incest statistic, yeah. which it's less than 1% yeah. of women who get an abortion was because of rape, sexual mm -hmm. assault. Mm -hmm. And addressing that on a couple different levels, one is that women tell us that if they went ahead and chose to have an abortion after a rape, now they're having to heal from two traumas, yep. not just the one. Mm -hmm. So they have two traumas to live through. And the second thing is the women that choose to go ahead and continue their pregnancy, even though it was that difficult situation, and we call it choosing joy, because yeah. mm -hmm. you do, you have a choice, right? Yeah. I can mm -hmm. either just like let mm -hmm. this be awful and I'm going to think of maybe it's gonna, this baby's going to look my per perpetrator, mm -hmm. and every time I look at my baby's face, I'm going to see the perpetrator. You can go there, yeah. or you can say, this is my baby too, exactly. mm -hmm. and I'm going to choose to continue this pregnancy, and maybe I'll parent this baby, or maybe I'll make a plan for adoption with one of those couples yeah. mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. If I feel like I can't parent, this child mm -hmm. um and so they're choosing joy and as they go further in their pregnancy and we've walked alongside a couple women mm -hmm. after a sexual abuse situation and she's choosing life further and further she gets in her pregnancy she realizes this is my baby yeah. Yeah. this is a life Amen. this is my child this is my son this is my daughter mm -hmm. my child exactly. and um, then choosing that life and that's a testimony that i wanted to share so we have the stories of 15 women that we talked with there on the sidewalk just in 2020 That's that have come back to tell us, I know there's more, that they're choosing life because they mm. interacted with our team there. Well, we had something to do with it, but God certainly did Amen. too. Yeah. Um, they're choosing life. Based and on. two of them had had their baby. One was that one of those women that mm. had been raped. Wow. And she and her mom came and talked with Maya, one of our sidewalk mm. advocates. And the young lady didn't talk to us very much. She was inside getting her ultrasound and yeah. struggling with that decision but we talked with mom and gave mom the words and the mm -hmm. tools to think about how to approach that with her daughter okay. to encourage her to choose life and she did yeah. she texted us later and said my daughter is going to continue this pregnancy even though she was raped mm -hmm. and um so they kept in touch, and at the end of last year, that baby was born. Ten pounds, six ounce baby wow. boy <laughs> was born, a lot and she's of love. yeah, she's parenting that little boy, and we're walking alongside her oh, with a lot of sad. wonderful resources mm -hmm. in that situation. But um, the other testimony, while we're on testimonies, yes, yes. is the other mom. We we uh, do a prayer email, but we call them the names the first initial. Okay, mm -hmm. so that mom's first initial is B, mm -hmm. and uh, B, and she had her baby A uh, in February, and we had kept in touch because I had spoken with her last June, and uh, she uh, chose not to go in for that abortion oh, at God. Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And she told me later in June that that's what her decision had been. And we kept in touch mm -hmm. via text throughout the year. And she had her baby in February. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know exactly what date. I just knew she had a boy and I knew she had a baby. And we give them a gift basket mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. if we can come visit. And one of our team members is a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. So she offers a free infant photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And so I took her that gift card and I met her boyfriend, S. And mm -hmm. uh, they were mm -hmm. just just so enthralled with this baby and loving on this baby. And a personal note to that story is uh, my dad had passed away in February and we had, uh, he had lived with us for 11 years. He passed away at the age of 94. He had a wonderful, uh, long, long life. Uh, so I was kind of, you know, still in that uh, phase and it was a little later in February. So, you know, when was a born? I asked um, the father of the baby and he goes, February 16th. That was the day my dad went to be with the Lord. <laughs> so, you know, back in June when I met her, God already knew, you know, she was going to choose life. Baby was going to be born. She knew my dad was going to go be with the Lord. And it was all on that same day. And I love that what you said, even with how god work that out mm -hmm. is like so many people think in a bad situation mm -hmm. what a lot of them are mm -hmm. bad situations they think that oh this is so demonic mm -hmm. this is and it's like no <laughs> satan doesn't create babies god mm -hmm. does so if god mm -hmm. wanted you to have that baby he did he gave you that baby he mm -hmm. put it in your womb mm -hmm. he knit them together it talks yes. about it in yes. the bible so we need to be excited about mm -hmm. that that even in the midst of that terrible thing mm -hmm. it's not like that guy or 
Satan created mm-hmm. the baby. God did. And that's, that's right. what I always remind people. It's like mm-hmm. God has a perfect plan mm-hmm. for your life, for the baby's life. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of women who I think they just also get afraid because they think, oh, well, I really do want to raise my baby like we were talking mm-hmm. about with the situations of not adopting but I can't do it on my own. And that's why mm-hmm. I always tell people, we're like, mm-hmm. it doesn't take a village to raise a child, <laughs> it takes a church. And it's like, that's why it's mm-hmm. important for these women too. It's mm-hmm. like, they're not alone. They can be mm-hmm. involved and be in, in a church that mm-hmm. loves them and cares about them, even if they are a single mother. Mm-hmm. Like, we still care about them. That's right. There's so many other people that want to step up and mm-hmm. help. Mm-hmm. So that's just encouragement for anyone out there. If you feel mm-hmm. alone, to go be a part of a church family that that's will right. love on you and mm-hmm. your baby and to not feel alone in that mm-hmm. way because the only mm-hmm. answer we know is they can do all these things, keep the baby, but without Christ as the That's center, right. they will be That's depressed right. and still lonely. Mm-hmm. So we always mm-hmm. like to remind people I like you need to mm-hmm. understand that there is hope mm-hmm. in Christ mm-hmm. and he's the one who gives us peace. But That's right. do you have any other um, maybe testimonies or anything mm-hmm. that you've seen on the sidewalk, just stories that you thought maybe, oh, this is going to be really <laughs> bad. And then the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. just worked it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I do want to mention, though, I love the church and the church is going to help, too. Mm-hmm. And then these faith based centers yeah, like yeah, Hands sure of Hope, is. which is right around the corner yep. from um, Planned Parenthood and right next to Choices Women's Center. And they refer to all sorts of resources. There's also a new ministry in town and we're uh, hoping to be referring to them soon that will walk alongside women Mm -hmm. and couples that choose life and mentor them. Mm -hmm. So these couples from churches, she's Mm -hmm. recruiting couples from all sorts of churches, um, from all sides of town. And as soon as a woman tells us or tells hands of hope that they're choosing life Mm -hmm. for themselves. And I want to emphasize that Mm -hmm. we are all about the woman thriving because when she thrives, the baby will thrive. But We want her to thrive during and after an unplanned pregnancy. And so she's really choosing life for herself because, again, we know the aftermath yeah. mm-hmm. of abortion, mm-hmm. and it's so difficult. And yeah. so she's choosing life for herself and her preborn baby. Yeah. But as soon as she does, this couple from a church mm-hmm. will get paired up with her mm-hmm. and start to meet with her, throw her a baby shower. Mm-hmm. Probably the church or their mm-hmm. small group at church yeah. will all put in for that baby shower, walk alongside her and possibly the father of the baby if he's involved up until that baby is five years old years old wow because wow. then they feel like well then they're going to school and they're getting yeah. another support group they're doing classes they're doing so. mentoring they're doing discipleship um guys can take a home maintenance class an auto mm. maintenance class a uh, practical nice. tools classes parenting classes all of that um hands of hope offers those some of the other pregnancy centers offer referrals for those so Yes, women Amen. are not alone, and mm-hmm. people in, t- in Tucson and Pima County are so generous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they will walk alongside a woman no matter what her situation, mm-hmm. and we are not about shaming or judging. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just there to love because mm-hmm. all of us have sin in our life, right? Yep. Yep. And this is no different than our other sins, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just a little bit more visible as you get further along in your yeah. pregnancy. Exactly. <laughs> but all those hidden sins. So mm-hmm. just that non-judgmental helping her mm-hmm. Um, choose life, Um, just being able to offer that to those women and guys um, that are there in an unexpected pregnancy. And another factor with COVID, um, and it's kind of a good thing, is that at least at Planned Parenthood, no one other than the patient can go inside. Mm -hmm. So, And Planned Parenthood is not known for its customer service. So Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. spend a long time in there, two to three hours for an appointment, typically, Mm -hmm. for an ultrasound appointment or some appointment. So the guy, father Mm -hmm. the baby sitting in the car, or mom who brought her daughter for an abortion, sadly, or sister Mm -hmm. or friend are all sitting in the car. So we, as the sidewalk advocates, have more time to interact with them. (laughs) You know, just reach out, hey, do you need a granola bar? Do you need a bottle of water? You've been here for two hours. You know, would you like an article? Just it gives a little bit more information about the care that's being offered here. (laughs) Um, And then try and dialogue, especially with the fathers of the baby. So if it's a guy, you know, we ask, you know, the father the baby how do you feel about this have you told her how you feel Mm -hmm. um a lot of times they're believing the lies of of 
our our society that yeah. says that he doesn't have any say, yeah. mm-hmm. that it's her choice, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And so we have an opportunity to dialogue with him about uh, number one, telling her how he feels, because most guys are just like, oh, it's just her choice. But when we really talk to him about it, he he realizes it's his baby too, mm-hmm. and we encourage him. You know what? God made you to be a protector. Mm-hmm. And this is your opportunity to protect mm-hmm. her because of the aftermath of abortion, yeah. mm-hmm. not only emotionally, spiritually, and phys- uh, physically, but even then in the future, um, infertility, not being able to have a baby yeah. when you really want a baby, maybe mm-hmm. you get married and now you're ready. And sometimes yeah. the aftermath of abortion is that you can't have any children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're protecting her, mm-hmm. um, but you're protecting your pre-born son or daughter mm-hmm. also. So as a man, and we'll share that, and guys kind of stand up taller, Amen. you know, yeah. and our shoulders go back and, yeah. and you know, and like, you know, it texts her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Myra Rodriguez, who is another abortion facility worker that came out even in Arizona, mm-hmm. uh, she's told us, and Abby has told us, Abby Johnson from the Unplanned movie, that it's at least an hour before when they check in for their surgical abortion and when they actually are taken back. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell him, text her. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her there's some really nice people out here that want to help. And you don't need to do this today. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. not a hurry. You know, we can wait. We can come back another day. But they want to help us. Let's at least let them show us, talk with us. Mm-hmm. Walk over to Hands of Hope mm-hmm. and get a free ultrasound over there. And I can go in with you to see the ultrasound, which is a really great thing about mm-hmm. pregnancy okay. centers, where, again, no one can go back to see their ultrasound at Planned Parenthood. Because mm-hmm. Planned Parenthood doesn't want you to say, oh, it's a baby, yeah. or oh, that's my son or my daughter, or yeah. oh, did you hear the heartbeat? Mm-hmm. They don't want any of that dialogue mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want any emphasis on the humanness of the life because mm-hmm. they're making money yeah, off yeah. of her difficult situation exactly. they're in the business of abortion yeah. mm. and sorry that's their business sure. yeah. um and so come on out let's go over to hands of hope we could get a free ultrasound there mm-hmm. i can go in and see the baby and let's talk about it some more and um i'll be there for you we tell him we tell girls other friends Women tell us that if someone says, I'm going to be there for you throughout this pregnancy, I'm going to walk alongside you yeah. through this pregnancy, I'll help you, mm-hmm. she'll choose life yeah. for herself oh, yeah. Yeah. as well as her baby because someone else says, you know what, I'm going to be there for you. Get out of there. Let's go somewhere else. Let's not do this today. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of like strong for her, but that's what she really wants to hear. Yeah. Yeah. A woman wants to hear that her guy is going to step up and be yeah. there for her. I, don't, I tell them they don't have to promise to marry her, although yeah. that would be really <laughs> nice yeah. but just that you're going to be there exactly. you're going to be there for her and that's what women want yeah. we are made to need a man to provide security for yeah. us that's the way god made us mm-hmm. and men are made to protect mm-hmm. and provide that security mm-hmm. so step up and be dad yes. and do what you are made to do and mm-hmm. go in it used to be i tell him to go in and get her he can't go in there mm-hmm. he can go in there to sign the paper saying he's going to pick her up after the surgical abortion mm-hmm. and he can go in there to pay mm-hmm. for the surgical <laughs> abortion but he can't go in there to talk with her or sit with her or see her ultrasound wow. mm. or hold her hand. Yeah. Um, so do they, text show, her. they don't show the ultrasound probably to them, do they? Well, or? by law, yes. here's another oh, yeah. Arizona law oh, cool. that um, they have to offer to see the image of the baby, offer to hear the okay. heartbeat if it's far enough along, which 21 weeks is when you can hear a heart, heartbeat. I'm sorry, 21 days yeah. is when you can hear a heartbeat. Um, and get a printout of your ultrasound. Mm. They, by law, are supposed to offer that. We don't know if that always happens, yeah. but by law, they're supposed to. Because I know there is like these vans that mm-hmm. would come by. Yeah. And they would show them mm-hmm. their baby, mm-hmm. you know, just really clear save and everything. The storks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, save the storks. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's still a thing here. Yes. But the stats were amazing. Amazing. Like when they saw their baby mm-hmm. and saw that it was an actual human mm-hmm. being. Exactly. Then they they didn't go through with it. Exactly. So. I think it's like close to 87% wow. of women that are in an unexpected pregnancy that are either undecided or abortion minded mm-hmm. that when they see the image of their ultrasound of their baby on the ultrasound choose mm-hmm. life. Yeah. for themselves. And as you're mentioning that Save the Starks Fest, uh, Hands of Hope is purchasing a huge uh, mm. mobile ultrasound unit from Sa- Save the Storks. It should be here in the fall, probably September. Mm. It's big enough that two ultrasounds oh, can wow. be going on at the same time. Awesome. And they're going to travel all over Tucson all right. and probably Southern <laughs> Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Your can little you logo of Save the little Storks. Logo? I know, yeah. I have their shirt. <laughs> um, 
and they're going to be able to provide right. ultrasounds in places that there's not a pregnancy center mm-hmm. where women might be maybe near the campuses or near a high school or um, to be able to offer that because you're mm-hmm. right, Morgan. Yeah. That makes all the difference because, again, yeah. you're realizing the humanness yeah. Yeah. of that baby that your child because yeah. so many people don't know fetal development, right? Mm. And you don't know, oh, you know, even at, at 10 weeks, it's this big or at 12 weeks or whatever, yeah. Um, yeah. that, and that they baby. And strategically put it in communities too where people are a lot more poor or mm-hmm. the black communities, mm-hmm. they really are target, mm-hmm. targeting them. And people don't understand too if they're freaked out about even racism. I'm like, mm. Planned Parenthood <laughs> is the most mm. racist mm. company or whatever yeah. thing you can think of. Mm-hmm. It's like how many black babies that could have been alive in mm-hmm. here that have been targeted, yes. aborted. Margaret, Margaret, Margaret Singer, Singer, she was a racist. <laughs> she was part of a KKK K group too John, and she's yeah. just yeah it's mm. so sick mm-hmm. but so many times people don't want to hear this stuff because mm-hmm. they just go based off what they feel at the moment That's but right. what people need is the truth they That's need right. even though it is hard because we always explain the difference between being nice to someone being nice is if someone's about to have an abortion you're just like oh you do what you feel mm-hmm. that's totally fine but being kind mm-hmm. is saying the hard thing in love saying hey this is going to affect mm-hmm. not only you mm-hmm. and your baby but mm-hmm. you need to understand this is breaking god's heart too mm-hmm. and you don't understand that this is murder mm-hmm. and so it's the hard truth but you're saying it in love mm-hmm. so that they will mm-hmm. they won't have any excuse to say oh i didn't know mm-hmm. because I think it's really good to just bring it back to like the verse that we always say Mm -hmm. um, is Proverbs 31, 8. Morgan said this, open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open Mm. your mouth, judge righteously, defend Mm. the rights of the poor and needy. Mm -hmm. And so that's not just talking about Mm -hmm. we're saying the babies. We care about the mothers and the fathers. That's right. And I think so many times people think, oh, you just care about the baby. Why Mm -hmm. don't you care about me? But I love with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's like, we care about the whole family. Mm-hmm. We care about all of you because God cares about you. That's right. So that's right. praise God for that. But do yeah. you have anything else that you would like to share <laughs> well, with our listeners? that triggered a, a memory of okay. Josh Brom. He's a pro-life apologetics and he mm. teaches um, sidewalk advocacy classes. They're, they're equal rights uh, organization. But he tells the story of, you know, when we're talking about, well, you know, maybe you just want to make your own decision. Mm. And I, you know, I w- probably wouldn't have an abortion myself, but if you feel like it's okay, mm. tells us, you know, the analogy that, okay, so you see a mom and she has two children in car seats in her back seat and she's going to drive into the lake yeah. with her children because she's despondent or she has postpartum depression or she's drunk or whatever. Yeah. Would you do something to mm. stop that? Yeah. Yes, yes, you would run over there and try and stop her or dive in the lake and Mm -hmm. get those babies and that mommy out of that car. Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing is we are at a place in our community standing on that sidewalk. It's the only place in our community that innocent lives are being taken Mm -hmm. every weekday of the year, practically innocent lives. Okay. So let's think about that because people will say, Oh, well, are you for, you know, the electric chair or whatever? Yeah. Well, you know, those people have gone before a judge exactly. and, mm-hmm. and they probably did some really bad things. Exactly. And mm-hmm. uh, whether I'm for that or not, yeah. um, this is an innocent exactly. human being mm-hmm. and really two innocent human beings because yeah. mom's life is going to be affected oh, negatively yeah. too. But mm-hmm. we're at a place where broken people, shamed people, fearful people a lot of women are really afraid and that's partly why they're choosing abortion they're afraid of Mm. what their parents would say Mm -hmm. they can't finish their education they can't afford another baby their boyfriend is going to leave them Mm. if they are pregnant they are fearful Mm -hmm. um and confused Mm -hmm. they don't know the truth we are in a place where people need Jesus. Yeah. There's so many broken people coming right there to that facility. Yeah. What an opportunity, mm-hmm. you know, to offer God's grace, God's truth, mm-hmm. right? And that he came to set the captives free and that perfect love casts out fear. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and to just encourage people to cry out to God. Mm-hmm. He's the mover of mountains. Mm-hmm. And this probably feels like a mountain to you, yeah. but mm-hmm. he will move a mountain on your behalf. Let's ask him, exactly. yeah. you know? know and just 
see what he would do. Give it time. Don't go in there today. You know, get some support. Who in your family would support you? And they usually will say there's someone in their family that will help them. Well, let's call them. Let's get, Mm -hmm. you know, talk to your mom. Maybe your dad's going to be mad at first, you know. He's paying for your college education and he didn't know you were (laughs) fooling around. He's going to be mad. But eventually he's going to realize that's his grandbaby. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't tell him and you abort his grandbaby, he's going to be even madder. (laughs) You know, 100 percent of the time yeah. so um you know let let's get some help going mm-hmm. here let's speak some truth yeah. and come alongside mm-hmm. women that are in those really difficult situations mm-hmm. and um we've heard it yeah. <laughs> and no yeah. matter what the situation is there is help Amen. available for them there is hope Amen. and then the women that have made that decision already and the men that participate in an abortion decision, there's healing Mm -hmm. available for them through Jesus' name. I mean, those retreats, those deeper still retreats or that one-on-one counseling, so many people have gotten that healing and they've been set free Mm -hmm. from that burden that they've carried for so many years. Mm -hmm. Um, The clinic workers too, getting counseling after participating in so many Mm -hmm. abortions and Abby struggles with that and it shows that in this movie, the Mm -hmm. unplanned movie, of struggling with participating in so many thousands thousands of abortion decisions. Mm-hmm. So clinic Amazing. workers struggle. Yeah. Um, they need help coming out because they're they want to help women. That's mm-hmm. why they got involved mm-hmm. in the healthcare business. But then pretty soon they realize they and when yeah. they're having to count the baby body parts mm-hmm. after an abortion, mm-hmm. they're realizing, ooh, this is yeah. not what I signed up for. But yeah. then it's too late. They're a single mom. They need the income. They're in too deep. Um, mm-hmm. they're an undocumented men and immigrant and they don't have paperwork but Planned Parenthood will hire them Mm. Um, they can't find a job anywhere else they're in pretty deep but um, there's help for them as well and like I remember one part in the movie I haven't seen in a long time but it shows the baby like moving away Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. babies like they can feel I don't feel pain you know what when it is Mm -hmm. but I'm like we don't understand too that I love how um, so many people give the acronym of SLED, yes. talking about size, location, and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Seth Gruber, he talks about development, that. Mm-hmm. environment development. And mm-hmm. so just because your baby is smaller or in a different location yes. or all this stuff doesn't mean, oh, now you have the right. Because like so many mm-hmm. people say, if they think they have the right inside the womb to do it, why not when you're outside the That's womb? Right. Should you <laughs> the not toddler. have the same thing? Right. Yeah, if your baby <laughs> has some mental Mm -hmm. thing or if they're down syndrome Mm -hmm. why can't i you know Mm -hmm. say oh i don't really want you as Mm -hmm. much as a kid that is more developed or Mm -hmm. if you're smaller why can't we allow people to beat you up or whatever Mm -hmm. and so they thought that in Mm -hmm. doing abortions that making it legal they thought that that would put down um make every child love Uh, make every child a wanted child but if Mm -hmm. anything it's made child abuse go up Mm -hmm. since then because they think that I have the right inside, Mm -hmm. I should have the right outside too. Mm -hmm. So I can do whatever I want to you because I could have, because they think I could have gotten rid of you Mm -hmm. and I should have. And just, they shouldn't have that even in their mind. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we just need to remind ourselves too. It doesn't matter just inside the womb for us Mm -hmm. too. Seeing people outside, if they're, Mm -hmm. if they look different than us, Mm -hmm. if they are a little weirder, Mm -hmm. what we might think isn't normal, we still need to love him, mm-hmm. love him with the eyes of God because mm-hmm. we are all created in the image of God. He loves mm-hmm. us. And that's where I'm just so thankful what of what you're doing because you're also directing people, like we always say, to the cross of Jesus. That's right. That it doesn't mm-hmm. really just matter how your life is so comfortable and easy. Did you go to college or not? Because I think mm-hmm. that I'm like, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't even be doing a podcast. I really <laughs> basically only have a high school education. I'm, I don't feel that smart. But still i'm not living for the here now i'm living for eternity and directing others to eternity Mm -hmm. with him and so i love that that that's the whole point with what Mm -hmm. these families we want to direct people Mm -hmm. to jesus in an intimate relationship with him because it says he is the father of the fatherless Fatherless. he is Mm -hmm. el shaddai many breasted Mm -hmm. one a mother he Mm -hmm. loves and he's all those things he's a counselor people can't pay for counseling Mm -hmm. he's all those things Mm -hmm. and he's there with open arms Mm -hmm. willing and ready to help whoever Mm -hmm. cries out to him so do you have time for one more yes thing. yes of course so when we were talking about the excuses for abortion mm-hmm. and rape is the primary yeah. one but there's mm-hmm. also that poor pregnancy diagnosis mm. oh well you know they told me that um i'm i'm yeah. gonna die or the, the baby's gonna die down anyways down syndrome, or the yeah. baby has down syndrome or whatever but that poor pregnancy diagnosis um there are 
um, so many OBGYNs. Uh, I think there's a document with 33 of them that signed it and said there is never a case where you have to abort the child to yeah. save the mother's life. Yeah. Because that's what mm. that excuse is. And there's a difference between abortion and having her continue mm. her pregnancy as long as healthy possible and maybe getting some treatment if it's cancer or whatever it is, getting treatment for that. And then having that baby be as far along in the pregnancy as possible and then delivering that baby, whether it's through a cesarean section or um, natural delivery, um, that's a different thing. And then hopefully the baby will live. But if the baby didn't live, at least you didn't abort the baby. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And mom will be okay. I was going to actually God's ask hands you that. Yeah. It was, yeah. is that one of the toughest questions That's for like people a tough to mm -hmm. debate? Situation. Because I was thinking a lot of people might not make it out to the sidewalk, yeah. but they have people that are wanting to debate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or saying, how can mm -hmm. you support this? Yeah. What a, so... Is that the toughest one that people get <laughs> most of the time? That one yeah. and the rape and the rape one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that actually happened mm -hmm. with my aunt. So my my aunt, she was pregnant and she went in for her ultrasound mm -hmm. and they said, you're having a girl and all this stuff. But then they said, oh my goodness, your baby is going to have all these problems and you might die. So you, mm. and they literally gave her no option. There was no option. She literally felt trapped. She said she knew in that moment, they're saying, okay, so we're going to direct you to this abortion. That was all they gave her. And she literally in that moment knew run. She literally <laughs> just ran as fast Good. as she could. <laughs> and her baby's totally fine. Yeah. Completely yeah. healthy. Yes. And even yeah. in those moments, even if you're thinking mm -hmm. that, oh, you could die, right? Because mm -hmm. I think the men are probably like, I don't want my, my right, girl to my die and all this stuff. Die. They mm -hmm. That's the whole point of trusting that God is sovereign and mm -hmm. in control. Mm -hmm. We can't take matters into our own mm -hmm. hands. We can't think that we're going to be the sovereign and we're in control. Mm -hmm. Like we believe God can heal and he can do that's with right. man, right? <laughs> the things fail. and mm -hmm. But with God, all things are possible and we mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. And so I love that with so many situations, like with my mom, right? She has stage four metastasized breast cancer, but we believe that God is in control of that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to try to think that, oh my goodness, like we need to stress out and freak out mm -hmm. and do all this stuff. We take it day by day. And my mom's mm -hmm. the best at it, choosing joy, like you mm -hmm. talked about and saying, God, what do you want me to do today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where is this in scripture and all this? And so I just... We know that without a doubt that abortion is murder and it's mm -hmm. wrong. It's clearly in scripture. Mm -hmm. We read um, even in, is it Psalm 139? 139. Yep. That's my mom's favorite too. <laughs> she loves the end too. It says mm -hmm. um, Psalm 139, 23 and 24 at the end. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test mm -hmm. me and know my anxious thoughts. Because there's so many women who are anxious mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. fearful, and it says, point out any offensive way in me. We need to also say, God, am I hurting you mm -hmm. in doing this? Which, yes, because he created the baby. That's right. And lead mm -hmm. me, like we've been talking about, on the way of everlasting life. Because mm -hmm. that's our prayer for everyone is ultimately, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you don't have a perfect, comfy, cozy life. Mm -hmm. But our whole point of like why we're living is to direct others to Christ. Because even if you have your baby and all this stuff, and then after that, your life isn't the perfect thing that mm -hmm. maybe you thought these mm -hmm. people are trying to tell you would be, but we know that God promises that there'll be persecution and suffering. Right. But at the end of the day, we can still <laughs> give God glory. That's mm -hmm. why we're created. We're mm -hmm. created to other women like you have on the sidewalks, mm -hmm. those women who went through it and say, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to warn you because I don't want this to happen. And mm -hmm. I'm going to also declare the goodness of God, how mm -hmm. good he is to mm -hmm. save me from that. So right. I just, I just get so excited to have people like you who really have a heart for all lives, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. people say, oh, right. BLM, but we're like, no, all lives matter. That's right. Mm -hmm. So anything Black, else? Black, pre-born babies' Amen. lives matter. Amen, <laughs> exactly. Amen, yeah. they do. And in New York City, there are more Black babies aborted than born. Mm. Wow. That's so I mean, the abortion rate is yeah. so high there. Mm. So, yeah. 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 So and we're then, standing up like, all lives. I think it's like around... 340,000 were aborted by Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, or this, I don't even know how many totally in the world, yeah. but just like that in our, number in our country. should make people like yeah. disgusted. And like, right. but we just see that number, and we're like, oh, it's no big deal. It's fine. Like, 63 But then million. it starts showing how yeah. we're treating others. I know. We're treating others with disrespect and stuff mm -hmm. because of how we treat life 
when they're in the womb mm-hmm. we, can, we call them a fetus so then when people are out of the womb we can call them nasty and just names mm-hmm. that aren't true so mm-hmm. anyway yeah. that's my whole thing i just get i'm like <laughs> yeah i know that at the end of the day we also have trust and peace that even if a woman doesn't get to approach you on the sidewalk that the holy spirit is ministering to mm-hmm. them and speaking to them mm-hmm. and god is in control and he's sovereign mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. man has right responsibility and they have free will but at the end of the day we know god is in control because i know so many people like at times i'm like we can't save everyone and mm-hmm. i feel so mm-hmm. stressed it's but it's like mm-hmm. we need to do our pe- mm-hmm. our best to on our own mm-hmm. i know you probably have to do mm-hmm. it when you see stories of women and mm-hmm. people you know they're going about with it yes. it breaks it's, your heart it does break our heart just they like they go it in the front God's. and then they come out the back yeah afterwards but yeah. at the end of the day you're like you know that all you can do is just trust that god is in control and you it just makes you even more intimate with god it might Mm -hmm. make some people bitter towards god like god why are you allowing this but god he's in control and we don't but also it's not god who's allowing it there's also sin we need to remind people it's because of the fall it's because there is the prince of this world which is satan who Mm -hmm. wants to steal kill and destroy Mm -hmm. so for us as christians we cannot be pro-choice or whatever we need to be pro-life which is the, the biblical way it's right. god's way so. speaking yeah. anyway i'm sorry yeah. i was kind of went off yeah. but anything <laughs> else any last words let's and where are um, we going to talk yes. about the training yes let's talk about the training so if somebody's really been touched and feel yeah. like this might be something again it's not something you naturally do yeah. hmm. but something you'd like to get trained to do yeah. um, we are doing a training on saturday april 17th from 1 to 4 30 at an east side location what I'd like you to do is just text prolove Tucson at gmail.com mm-hmm. and let me know that you might be interested. And what we'll have you do is come and shadow us yeah. on the sidewalk before that training day mm-hmm. just to see what it's like. Be there at an abortion facility. Maybe you've never been to an abortion facility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, view the clients coming in and out and see if that's something that you think God might be calling you to. And then we'll give you the location of the training, do a little pre um, training interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, if someone has had an abortion decision in their past, we refer them to get some healing counseling first mm-hmm. before they come to the sidewalk because sometimes yeah. it's triggering yeah. when you're talking to people that are either making that decision or have just made that decision. Yeah. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, so get some healing yeah. first mm-hmm. and then come. Um, but we're doing that training. It's a free training. It's a ministry. We ask for people to be committed enough to give two mornings a month mm. uh, to come. And our abortion facilities in Tucson are only open weekdays. So mm. we're on the sidewalk. Our team is there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday mornings. So it'd be someone that has that flexibility in their yeah. schedule. Mm. But we also do prayer walks. Mm. So yeah. if a church wanted to get a group together and come mm. on Saturday morning or an evening, mm-hmm. come and do a little worship, uh, intercessory prayer worship Mm -hmm. uh, and then prayer walk around the abortion facilities and hands of hope because they're all within the same complex Um, you could do that you know Mm -hmm. so there's things that you can do that aren't Mm -hmm. within the realm of sidewalk advocacy with a trained Mm -hmm. group Uh, 40 days for life Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. is an awesome ministry and it happens twice a year spring and fall we just ended the spring vigil and there'll be another one in the fall Mm -hmm. you can sign up just for an hour to come and pray Mm -hmm. outside of an abortion facility 24 7 so weekends nights um and come and pray and undergird the trained sidewalk advocates that are there Amen. Mm. Yeah. Praise Just God. don't step on the property. <laughs> I know. I know. I was like, we were praying, <laughs> and I, my foot was kind of on the line. <laughs> and they were like, hey, get up. I was like, oh, I didn't Because we want to make sure yeah. that we're law abiding. Yeah, we want to make two. sure that we're Because in some t- cities, they go to the city council and they complain because yeah. people are, you know, not on the sidewalk, not on the, and they get a buffer zone. So you have to stand like 500 feet away oh, from the abortion yeah. facility. Then you don't have an opportunity to talk mm-hmm. with the client. So we are very careful yeah. for yeah. that reason, and also just because. We want to be law abiding. Yeah. We stay on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, we're encouraging everyone to go check out prolove Tucson at gmail.com. Email them and I'll put all of that in the description below. And so you guys can check it out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. also we are going to have Seth Gruber, who is he's been on our podcast before, but mm-hmm. he has a podcast called Unaborted. Mm-hmm. And so he will be here April twenty fifth at 10 a.m. So you can go register online at calvaryov.com slash events. And um, I think that's it for all of our 
announcements and stuff, mm-hmm. but would you, do you have any closing I, thoughts or anything? I think it'd be great to come and hear Seth because yeah. he helps equip us yes, he to does. how to dialogue, not, mm-hmm. you know, just for the sidewalk and, and it's a different kind of dialogue when you're actually interacting with someone that's yeah. right there making that life and death decision, but mm-hmm. with our neighbors, with our family members, yeah. Yeah. our coworkers, people in our class at school, yeah. how to dialogue with them about this yeah. issue and how in to an get intelligent involved too, way. Like in and the get involved. political stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, get involved, but have kind of those words to say the dialogue and to speak up for life, Amen. Amen. all life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love that. So everyone go check out all of that stuff in the description below. And Lucy, we're so thankful you could join us. But would mm-hmm. you like to pray for us? Before sure. Thank, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Almighty Father God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you that you are our daddy and that you're the one that made families, God, mm-hmm. and that um, you put us in families Uh, daddies, mommies, children, because you know that's where we're healthiest, where Mm -hmm. we thrive. God, and you're the one that came in a teenage young lady's womb Mm -hmm. as our Savior, Lord Jesus, and um, that you obviously believe uh, so much in life, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Uh, God, thank you for life. Thank you for opportunities to speak those words of life and encouragement and truth to all of those that need a word of encouragement, a word of grace. And God, um, uh, we pray that you would strengthen anyone that's within the sound of our voices that is Mm -hmm. experiencing an unintended pregnancy Mm -hmm. to reach out to hope and help with their family, with their church, uh, with a hands of hope, with another uh, faith-based pregnancy center. They can Google that and find a pregnancy center near them uh, that can offer them free uh, services from a pregnancy test to a free ultrasound to resources, God, uh, that they would be emboldened, encouraged, mm-hmm. strengthened to choose life. Our our theme uh, on the back of our sweatshirts is be brave mm-hmm. and that they can be brave and that you will strengthen them. Mm-hmm. God, I also pray for anyone that's participated in an abortion decision in the past, God, that you would draw them to yourself, Lord, that they would be uh, able to recognize your forgiveness just upon the moment of repentance, God, Mm -hmm. that you do throw our sin as far as the east is from the west, Mm -hmm. and you change our mourning into dancing, our Mm -hmm. ashes into beauty, God, and that you will use that to um, draw them close to you. God, I pray they would reach out to hope and help and recovery counseling that's available again Mm -hmm. at so many uh, pregnancy resource centers, God. Lord, that you would um, just be that uh, healing salve on that wound, that uh, heart that has been broken by that abortion experience, that abortion decision, Mm -hmm. Lord. And I pray that you would touch those that you would call to be a part of a pro-life sidewalk advocacy ministry, whether it's here in Tucson or in other cities across the country, God, that they would be um, just stirred up (laughs) to want to stand up for life and be equipped with the words, with the uh, resources to be able to dialogue with those especially that are coming in that unintended pregnancy that are confused or fearful or shamed or whatever, believing the lies Mm. of the enemy who came to steal, kill, and destroy, believing those lies that they can't do it, to come and empower them to believe that they can Mm -hmm. continue their pregnancy no matter what that situation, God. So stir in all of our hearts and minds, Lord, uh, Mm -hmm. reveal more truth to us. Thank you for your grace that you've extended to all of us. Lord, your forgiving grace. Thank you that this week we are celebrating your death for us on that cross, mm-hmm. your forgiveness of yes, our sins, God. and your being raised to life mm-hmm. uh, to give us not only eternal life, but abundant life right here. Mm-hmm. And God, thank you for that life mm-hmm. um, and that you have created us human beings in your image. What a, a special announcement that is, God, that we can live in and, and believe that promise, God. Thank you for Mariah and Morgan, Lord, in this uh, church, just being bold to stand up for life. And I pray that more and more churches and pastors would be bold and not believe that this is a political issue or Mm -hmm. some other thing, but this is a life and death issue. Mm -hmm. And this is where we have an opportunity to speak life and grace and the truth of your gospel, Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, to so many. Mm -hmm. God, so thank you and praise you. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. 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 Thank you, Lucy. Amen. Thank you. And we also want to remind you guys to go check out Pro Love to uh, Pro Love Tucson dot com mm -hmm. and make sure that you guys sign up. We'll have everything in the description below. And also join us for the Seth Gruber event April twenty fifth at ten AM and you can register online. That will also be below. And thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Please make sure you also like and subscribe. And if you would like to follow us on Instagram to see our behind the scenes, that is at Calvary Conversations. Also, you can check out our merch in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.